so I've... for people who have been tuning in, <laughs> we, uh, we skipped a week because life got the best of me, but we're doing two episodes in one today. Right. Although I'm very organized, so I think it may be totally feasible for us to like cut, cut tape, you know? Okay. But I'm just saying, I've got it like tight. Okay. Wow. I know. It's because, because I got confused, you know, like of who had left when. And so it's confusing. We, yeah. um, episode three is where we're, where we're kicking off tonight. So I guess we right. should toast. So to episode three. Clink. Clean, clean slate. And uh, so episode three, also known as the Jimmy Kimmel Show. Right. Um, for this episode, we had two one-on-ones, one group date, and a pool party instead of a cocktail par- uh, party. Right. Um, and I thought before we launch into that, I just have a couple of opening remarks, and, and you probably do as well, yes. about the Jimmy Kimmel episode. Right. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention, I actually pulled some things up on my iPhone and did a little research to see if I could actually show. Because one of the things that we talked about earlier was the girl... And I can't, Nicole, who came out with the pig nose. Right. And I said, in my experience, that people who come out in costumes, like things that cover their face or whatever, not a good move, again, unless we discuss, like, you're, like, a solid 10. Yeah. Um, which she was very attractive, but possibly not there. I know I referenced briefly. 8. 8.5. <laughs> right, 8.5. That, um, as we all are, right? Um, <clears throat> anyway, I... I think I referenced at that point that, or, or at least it was in my head to say that during one of the bachelors, bachelorette seasons, there was a guy who came out with a mask on, like a Phantom of the Opera mask. That is terrifying. Right. And he ended up, he wore it for like a couple of weeks. Like he didn't, <laughs> nobody had seen, I can't remember how long he was on the show, but like. <laughs> oh my God. He kept it on, okay? He kept it on. And 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 I want to show you what he looked like because if Please if we can do. see it on iPhone. Because it was a huge disappointment. It was not a good call at all when he when he came out. But what made me think of it is when Jimmy Kimmel so I read an article I might have mentioned once before I read an article about the guy who does the sound design, the music. Mm-hmm. Because as a musician, I have admired like the genius of what that person is doing and I've, I've at some point stumbled upon an article about the guy who, who does all the sound for them who designs the music that they play like the soundtracks mm-hmm. and when Jimmy Kimmel you know how they play this really suspenseful music yeah yeah when he you know you, you just see his feet I would be willing to bet money if I had any <laughs> I might almost be, if I had plenty, I would bet more money that the same music that they used while they were playing Jimmy Kimmel walking out was the music that they used when this guy got out of the limo. Mm. Um, and, and that's what made me think of him. So this is him. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> and Jeff? he kept it on. Wait a minute. Also, I it. love that his name is still Jeff. It's like you went right. to the trouble of creating a persona, but you were like, I'm going to stick with Jeff. That's that's pretty right. much like like you weren't like the great Horatio or something. You were just like Jeff. Jeff works for me. I'm just gonna wear this mask. Right. So it was at least a couple of weeks. I think that he kept it on. Like I feel like he had it on during dates or whatever. And then when he did the reveal, it was a huge, huge <laughs> letdown because can you see this? <laughs> What? Why would you set yourself up for that kind of failure? <laughs> I know. And what's interesting, yeah, anyway, so I just, I just thought I would throw that out there. The other thing I pulled um, photos of, just because cause I don't want to forget, is that Carly. Yeah. Who I'm growing to like a little bit. Yes, I agree. I uh, thought she's really cute. Yeah. That her, we, I, we learned that her brother was a former contestant mm-hmm. on... On Bachelorette. The Bachelorette. He was on Desiree's season. So Jeff, the Phantom of the Opera guy, mm-hmm. not to be confused with Bradley, the Opera guy, <laughs> oh, <laughs> he was on Andy's season. Jeff was on Ashley's season. And Ashley's actually one of the few who she married her guy and they're still married. Right. Um, Desiree... On her season, Carly's brother, Zach, was there. And I thought you might like to see if I could show it 
he got out of the limo with his shirt off. Oh. And he kept it off almost the whole season. So I don't know if you can see. Wow. Yeah, why not? I mean, if you're cut. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see. You got I think it. I have... Flaunt it. Let's see. I have. A... Oh, here. You'll appreciate this. Um, you remember the stripper date from Andy's season. Oh, do I don't I? know what this was. I think this was like a modeling show. But there he is. Um, <laughs> that is hilarious. That's, that's Carly's brother. All right. So anyway, I thought that would be a couple of... A little bit of insight. Um, yeah. The other insight that I feel like we have gained is into Chris Souls's personality or lack thereof. And it's really making my crush on him become more and more difficult by the day. Because dude is just a real wet blanket. And I feel like he still has some, like, redeeming qualities. But, you know... <laughs> like his pecs. Yeah, meaning his, the things that I want from him, for him to give me them, basically is what I'm saying. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah there's, just, there's just a lot. There's just... It's becoming increasingly difficult to give a fuck. And we're only, <laughs> we're only on week four, so I'm kind I know, of like, I was thinking mm. today, as you know, I texted you the, the nostalgic collage of the Brodies from Andy season, yes. and I was just thinking as I was walking down the street, I can't wait till we like just move through this Bachelor crap and get mm-hmm. back to Bachelorette so we can have all the guys back. Because I'm just, I'm over it. I'm over it. And I I actually have here in my notes, pretty much verbatim, what you just said, which is that I have said repeatedly in both the episodes that we've done that the biggest constraint about Chris is the location. Like, I've I've made it all about Arlington, Iowa, that, like, finding a lady who's going to be willing to live in Arlington, Iowa. But I'm realizing the biggest constraint is how boring he is. Yeah. Like, how he's just so vanilla. And then when you pair, and sometimes it's hard to tell where they bleed into one another, yeah, 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 but okay. when you pair how vanilla he is with your terminology that I thought was so perfect, casual misogyny, yeah, yeah. it's hard to tell sometimes, like, is he being a misogynist or is he just boring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they, and those things just bleed together, and what's left is this this ball of, like, plain white rice that you just don't want to eat. And it's just, it's like, you know, and then when you think about having to eat that ball of white rice in the middle of a cornfield in Arlington, Iowa, it's like, it's, I'm I'm starting to think that's the biggest constraint. The other thing I did notice, I don't know if you've noticed, this is again, just an opening remarks, that quite a uh, girl mance has been going on between Jillian and Britt. These two ladies, have I, you noticed? I didn't know that a little bit. Um, yeah, they, they snuggle a lot. Like, lots of the scenes where you see the girls, uh, like, in the yeah. living room, they'll be, like, sitting there, you know. And and then I um, I stumbled across it, actually. I hadn't really given it that much thought, but it was, it, a lot of people were talking about it online. Uh-huh. And um, so I can cite my source here. This is a quote uh, uh, pulled from um, entertainmentweekly.com mm-hmm. about what they, what the two have in common. Uh-huh. Okay. The two ladies. Cause Which a are. lot of people had noticed like when, and we'll get to this later, but when Jillian popped over the fence, like that epic move when they were doing the race, oh, right. <laughs> 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 Britt, Britt was the one who said like, you guys have to run that in slow-mo cause that was the most like epic thing I've ever oh, seen. Right. And then I started to notice, like, anytime you kind of see them sitting together in a group setting, they're often, like, like Brit's, like, got her head on Jillian's shoulder. Anyway, this is the quote from entertainmentweekly.com that I thought was interesting. These are what these things have in common. Th- mm-hmm. These two have in common. Devotions in the morning. So they're obviously both, like, probably conservative Christians if they're doing their devotions. Oh, okay. Fine. Which might explain um, Brit's no sex thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That she said initially. But devotions in the morning. Um, taking walks around the mansion in New Balance shoes and bikinis. Um, <laughs> <Ka-ching. laughs> stealing Reese's cups from the camera guys. And apparently a love for Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Do you and hear then the, wedding bells? <laughs> well, right. And then the quote goes on to say, so essentially they have more than any woman appears to have with Chris at this point. <laughs> so Chris is, yeah. I mean... We can get into Britt and Jillian actually later, because obviously two big right. things happen with them in, in episode four. Yeah. But I just um, thought they 
Girl Mance was worth giving a shout out for to. Sure. Now that for sure. So Caitlin's one on one with Jimmy Kimmel is the first thing that we hit. And um, so Caitlin, where is she? Caitlin's soundbite girl. Caitlin's the one yeah, that they have the, narrate yeah. every for us. Yeah. But Caitlin. She's the sassy narrator of the season. Yes, she sure is. So it was her and Chris. And they get a note that says something like, you're invited to an exclusive club. Yeah. And they're on the way. And she's like, hmm, I wonder what it will be. Yeah. And um, I think. It was this episode, really, for me, where Chris's... Yeah, me too. ...like, personality just took a real... I mean, I, I never thought he really had a personality before, but it took a nosedive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see him in the car, and you can see his face. She's going, yeah, Jimmy Campbell said lofted ceilings, an exclusive club. And you could see, like, Chris, yeah. like, eating it up. Yeah. And then he, you could see he was visibly dis dis disappointed when they show up at Castco. <laughs> <laughs> is this some sort of like, you know, really like, you know, regional Midwestern accent that I have never heard before? Like, what is Castco? It is a little bit, it sounded to me, but he's from Iowa. It sounded to me a little bit like the Wisconsin thing. Yeah. The Wisconsin you know, I took a sewing class once with a lady who was from Wisconsin, and that's what it sounded like to me, but he was like, he couldn't do the cost. Yeah. yeah. Casco. <laughs> yeah. Casco. Casco. It was too much. But, and, and more than his disappointment, what bothered me was his confusion. That's right. what the problem, it's not the fact that he, like, wants to hang out at an exclusive club and, like, have a fun time. It's like, he doesn't, he genuinely doesn't comprehend, like... Anything. Like, anything. <laughs> literally anything. Like, anything even vaguely. And this is, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, the yucks were coming with fucking Costco. It was like, anything even remotely humoristic or like a remotely off kilter, it's not even that he doesn't like it, he doesn't understand it. And like, right. that's he, what is concerning to me. <laughs> yeah, like, he actually can't process it. Yeah. He has a really... Like, narrow... Narrow range of yeah. what he expects. Yeah. To come out of somebody's mouth, to happen. And and I agree with you. It's not just, like, he judges it, which he does. Yeah. He, ju he judges it, but it's also, like, he's confused. <laughs> like, he's, con he's confused if people offer him information about... Basically, like, any information about themselves that he can't immediately identify with. When the ladies are talking, like if they begin to talk about something that's interesting, but that he never thought of before. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like he, he you're right, he's like... What? Lost. He's like, yeah, he's, he's lost, yeah. In Costco, you know, lost in Casco, the Chris Soul story. The other thing that I noticed, the pet peeve that I have about him, and this this is, I think this is directly correlates, this quality that we're observing in him, that yeah. he's has a very narrow range, and then he's also shocked by things that he doesn't understand or confused or whatever. I think that is directly correlated to why I am getting really irritated with him. Mm -hmm. Every single time, and he says it a lot, he says it almost every time he, he tries to give a compliment to one of these ladies, he'll say something on the order of, that really says a lot about who you are as a person. Yeah. And I'm like, if, if, if I were talking to someone like that, I'm like, how does somebody who's like barometer of like what can possibly happen in a day yeah. or in the world or what can come out of somebody's mouth, like that's that narrow of a range is going to critique these ladies on like yeah. the type of person that they are. Yeah. I'm getting really irritated with him repeatedly saying that, like, like or, or he, he liked that Whitney could hang with him crashing the, the wedding day. And he's yeah. like, I, that really says a lot about who you are. With Caitlin, who was able to bounce back from Costco, yeah. Casco, he says, that really says a lot about who you are. And I'm just like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You shouldn't be a game show. Anything. Like, it doesn't really say anything. I've noticed that it seems very low budget. And I don't know if that's, you know, what I had been wondering until I did a little research was like, is this because he's a farmer? That they're like throwing these girls literally like in mud with pigs. Like they're doing yeah, all this yeah. stuff. But also, none of it is stuff like the Costco thing. Not yeah. expensive. Which, I mean, they usually tend to like up the ante as the season goes on. But I've noticed a definite um, decline in that. So I think that more what creates, I think for sure that's part of the phenomenon. And the fact that they're on TV. 
Yeah. But I think it what really creates that like, oh my gosh, this guy. Yeah. It's because he's the only guy on the island. Yeah, true. You know, it's like from an evolutionary perspective, if yeah. these women have children, he's the only, you know, yeah. he's the only chance. He's the only guy on the island. So I yeah. think it makes, it brings those self-worth issues or that like wanting to fight for him because yeah. it creates this, even though it's temporary, this illusion that like, this is my only chance to find love. Yeah, 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 yeah. You well, know, and I think that's, that's very weird. powerful. But, um, 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 all right. So let's talk about a little bit more about Caitlin's date. Like I thought that. Her getting the rose was cute. I like Caitlyn. You know, it helps to have someone who's like, who has a, who has a sense of humor on the show that can like talk about things that don't put me to sleep. So that's good. Um, and I think that she got her rose. And it also is interesting that he chose her for a date with Jimmy Kimmel because I feel like of all the girls, like she was the one that could like probably have something to say to him, like roll with him. And she kind of like was obviously not a professional comedian, but like she kind of was in that situation on his. If if like, imagine if it had been with, like, Ashley I or some shit. Like, I would have shot myself. You know Whitney. what I mean? Oh, Whitney. <laughs> yeah, that would have been Can you imagine? Terrifying. Well, Whitney actually might have done okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, and Carly probably would have done okay. But, yeah, yeah a lot of them. Would have just been, like, would have... sink or swim. <laughs> the other thing that Jimmy Kimmel said was he said, uh... Oh, he, he, he was asking... This is one, I think, the other part that made me start to notice Chris's personality deficit was the contrast between him and Jimmy Kimmel. And yeah. Jimmy Kimmel is obviously paid to be funny, yeah. but I think the reason he's paid to be funny is because it seems fairly apparent he has a personality yeah. anyway. Yeah. And one of the ways that, that became evident was he was asking good questions. So like he asked Caitlin, you know, have you ever dated a farmer before? And they had this you know, interaction and Chris said, he said out loud, you know, well, of course, that's what said means. <laughs> um, he said, um, now we're getting somewhere. And I thought, yeah, because yeah, you've got somebody who has a thought in his head, yeah, who knows yeah. how to ask people questions. I mean, yeah. Jimmy Kimmel gets obviously paid to ask people questions, and I'm yeah. sure they think about that beforehand. But he's also just used to interacting with people, and it's very apparent. That Chris is not. Yeah, that he just doesn't have good people skills. Like, he doesn't he doesn't know how to ask people questions, yeah. and he doesn't know how to respond if somebody offers. Also, he and, doesn't seem genuinely interested, more to the point. You. Like, doesn't, you know, like, he doesn't seem interested in that, asking people questions. That being said, you know, to be a comedian, specifically, like, you have to be very observant. You have to be very smart. You have to, you know, it's like the qualities that, like, I mean, I don't want to say that he's not smart, but because we're all smart in our own special ways. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, he's definitely not observant, that's for sure. You know, well, and so it's, he, he's not, that facet of his personality is definitely nowhere near on par with someone like Jimmy Kimmel, um, which is why it was so right. great that Jimmy Kimmel was there to make fun of him. He's interesting because I'm starting to think he's like the worst in that regard than any Bachelor prior. I've yeah. seen people online, like I liked Juan Pablo. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. You know, I was a fan, but yeah. overall Juan Pablo ended up being hated. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have seen numerous like Midwestern housewives. Yeah. On, like, threads and stuff saying that Chris is worse than Juan Pablo. Yeah. So, I'm like, a lot, a lot of people are picking up on this weird brand of, as you said, casual misogyny mixed yeah. with, he's just pretend, pretending. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. like, too stupid to, like, pretend all the way. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. Just, it's, a, it's confusing, or it's yeah. weird. So, was the next date the zombie date? Because I have a lot to say about that. Mm -mm. Girl, we already did zombie date. That was oh, episode we? two that we filmed that hasn't gone up yet. All right. That's why I have my notes here because yeah. it's pretty confusing. It's, it's the next door. date was the farm race group date, right. and there were I had to pause stuff. I had to look things up on Wikipedia. I had to Google. There were twelve ladies on that date, and actually, which I think now maybe would be a good or an interesting, as far as I can tell, this is episode three we're talking about. The only ladies who didn't get a date because of the fact that they threw everyone in the basket on that. Yeah group date that that didn't get a date on week three were these four um megan trina ashley i and jade which yeah. flash forward might i mean she does it anyway she freaks out over everything yeah. but might at least i'm sure it contributed to her meltdown at the at the pool party because yeah. she hadn't had a date that week yeah. all she'd been doing was sitting around curling her eyelashes and god only knows what else so on that date was I don't have these in alphabetical order. I apologize. 
Britt, Carly, Jillian, Amber, Becca, Kelsey, McKenzie, Nikki, Tracy wasn't into it. Wasn't into him. The only fun that Tracy had, because Tracy was my pick, I'm just mentioning, for top three. Casey, uh, Tracy, you could see, just wasn't. She wasn't oh, named. right, the soccer. So, soccer. Much, so much so that, which I was like, this is cool. She was the, she's the fourth grade teacher. Oh, right. Um, <clears throat> she was the only person, you know how the rose ceremonies, everybody's super intense at the end, like the, you know, deer in headlights look. She was just laughing at Jimmy Kimmel's jokes. Like every time they showed her, yeah. she was like, just, she was just having fun to be there. So I think she was ready to go. But she was on that date, Ashley S., Julia, and God help me, Samantha, who is still there. I mean, she made it through week three and who? week four. Yes. Who? Thank, thank you. <laughs> oh, God. Ha, has not said, has not had one confessional, has not that they've shown us uttered one word on on film. Mm -hmm. Which, if it weren't for the fact that she looks like there's something seriously wrong with her, I would just, for the element of surprise, put her in the top three since Tracy yeah. went home. But I'm not doing that because I know that she's not going to be in the top three. But, I mean, it's just like, why is she still there? Who is she? What does yeah. she do? Yeah, agreed, agreed. And this is another point where Chris weighs in on ladies, yeah. where at the start of the date, and he says something like, I mean, most of these girls are city girls, and uh, if she can't get her hands dirty, she's not for me. And I thought, you're like the first person who would be in line to judge a woman if her hands were dirty. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean but I mean, the other funny thing about just the, the concept and the contract of this show is that in real life, in order to find love or find someone attractive or be in a relationship, whatever, you have to be open-minded. It's like you, you <laughs> have to be like, okay, she's a city girl, I'm a country boy, whatever. But like the fact that like it's this like meat rack and that like all of these, you know, attributes need to be met or it's not going to work is setting yourself up for failure because that's not the way relationships work. Like, you know, yeah. it's just like you're not – it's like the fact that she can't get her hands dirty or whatever is not – yeah, besides the point, if you're looking for a wife. And sometimes I think they miss, because of that, they miss the people sometimes who might have, you know, not been on the cover of the tabloid with them, but mm -hmm. been there in the long haul. They miss that because they're distracted by other things. Yeah. Not to flash forward, but when he gave Ashley S. that rose at the end of episode three, my lord. Like, I thought she was going to just, like, take the ice pick from behind her back and be like, wee, wee, wee. Like, her expression was like, Thank you for this rose. I was like, girl, the fuck? Like, what is going on? Well, we can talk about Ashley S. later. Yeah, well, because she's she makes it through week three. Oh, so yes. I she's know. there for week three. So the farm race group date, um, Jillian thinks she's going to win. Carly does win and is really cute about it. I like Carly. Um, um, that was like, because, because, she, because she hadn't done a lot up till then, and except come out with her pink, like, prom dress at, at, at the first episode, right. I was like, I don't know, Carly, but that was, like, the moment where I was, like, where it definitely turned for her on the show, and just for me yeah. personally, because I was yeah. like, oh, you're rad, and you're, like, funny, and, like, you get it, so you're, She's super so you're cute. Cool. Yeah, she did her little dance and everything like that, yeah. and Jillian, um, you know... I thought it was funny, too, which, I mean, true. She was right. She's like, if anybody was going to beat me, I wouldn't have thought it would be Carly, but at yeah. least I wasn't last, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, um, so that that happened really, again, to humiliate the girls, and also this, like, farm, this cheap date that's, like, sort of making fun of the fact that Chris is a farmer. Mm. Hilarious. You know? Yeah, they have to they drink the cup. Keep coming. And, and I don't know if you remember Amber's soundbite about the... Well, there was the there was the soundbite of Carly saying that only one teat was working, and she had to keep working the left one. But do you remember Amber's soundbite? Uh, no. <laughs> about, oh, no it was about Kelsey describing what it was like to drink the milk. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that one? Yeah, I do now. I do. Oh, so unfortunate, was... and yet so primed. It's like they. I could just. I would love what I would love. We need to get some guests up in this podcast. We need. The, the editors, the music mm. supervisors. Yes. And we need, because I'm sure the sound editors were like, uh, the people that like choose the sound advice are just like, again, genius. Genius. Yeah. 
For sure. And how they juxtapose it, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, the easy one to see coming was, like, Brit saying, you guys should slow-mo that. Yeah. When um, Jillian, you know, and, and then they do. Mm. But a lot of the others are just, like, yeah, too, like, too good. So, like, what, what Amber said, she said, I don't want anything warm and salty in my mouth or something. Yeah, she was like, I'm really glad I didn't have to drink the milk because um, Kelsey said it was warm and salty. That's just not something I want in my mouth. <laughs> Wah, wah. Oh, Amber. Then they do an after party. He's kissing everybody. He's kissing everybody, which I did just want to, well, no, we can talk about that later, but he's kissing everybody. They show him kissing everybody. And, and the weird then thing they, about the kissing, typically outside, again, of the contract of the show, I wouldn't think that was that big of a deal. But mm -hmm. the fact that on this show, having alone time and kissing is equivalent to almost like a sexual relation mm -hmm. because they're not supposed to have sex within so like it's really your only sexual contact right you know because like if he was like fucking all these girls that would be different obviously but it's almost sort of equivalent because he's not mm -hmm. it's not possible on the show like he's, he's clearly not like favoring and that's the weird thing also especially like on episode four it gets a little different but the girls, that, like, Brit, Ashley, I, that are like, I have such a great connection with him, I don't feel that he, anyone else has this with him, blah, blah, blah. He is clearly not, like, favoring one girl over another, and that I can tell. There were a couple that he might be slightly more fond of, but as far as, like, his time and his affections, like, he's not favoring really one any one person over the pack shall we say well and to his i think that he is in small ways which i can can point out like but that i think we get to that more in date four mm -hmm. but i think a couple of the ones that i thought from the outset were going to be in the final three i see these little subtle signs that he is favoring them but to his detriment well, not to, perhaps to his detriment, because he seems too stupid, perhaps, or, or he's going to escape unscathed from this. But I thought, flashing forward to Whitney's date, not only is he not openly favoring them, although I'm sure some of that is the edit, you know, that they want um, they want to convey that. But, like, with Whitney, he actually set their game that they pretended on their date was that they were engaged. Yeah. You know, and I was like... Especially because we could see how, like, when she got the date card, she cried. Because I think the week before, maybe she didn't go on a date or something. And so when they were waiting and she ended up getting one-on-one, -on -one, we see how, like, baby boys are not, like, sincere. I think she really is. Really yeah. probably there for him. Yeah. Really believes. Yeah. And so I just thought, that's cruel yeah. to say, yeah. like, oh, we're engaged. We'll say we're engaged at this. Yeah. I just thought... You know, and, and some of the other bachelors, I mean, Sean, Sean Lowe, who was two, two bachelors ago, he was, like, probably the most chased upstanding bachelor that they've ever had. And I think he was very careful about what he said, you know, to people. Yeah, yeah. And Chris just kind of talks to everybody the same, or in that case, really takes it to a level that, like, that's in that girl's heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's engaged. That's... And, I mean, that's her responsibility to manage that in a way. But I do fault him for, like, yeah. you say you're serious about this, but you're not taking even a statement like that yeah. very seriously at this point. Um, but at the after party, when he's kissing everybody, Mackenzie, one of our favorites. My fave. Number one girl. Get it, Mackenzie. <laughs> and says why are you kissing everyone else remember and she's funny how she did she's like um remember when we kissed like you and i we kissed because she was the first one to kiss him and i think she thought like you know although she That's doesn't really say yeah and she's like why are you kissing everybody else except becca who doesn't kiss him and becca ends up getting the rose yeah and the other thing i noticed i just when i was watching today to try and figure out who the ladies were Ashley's S's face. So Ashley S, we get a lot of that, like, super, like, yeah. Yeah. thing from her. When Chris, it, I don't know if this is actually how it happened in real time, but what the, they, the editing showed us was when Chris said he was giving the rose to Becca, Ashley S was incredulous. <laughs> she was like, they showed her face immediately falling, and she was like, 
you know, just couldn't believe that he had oh, given this to Becca. But I think Becca's one of the ones that's going to be there in the end. And I think that shows up in little ways in spite of the edit. So that was the group date. And then we had Whitney's one-on-one -on -one date where they went to a vineyard and then saw a wedding and then crashed, crashed the wedding, there, yeah. pretended to be engaged. Yeah. And so I know that, like, they had to do the release forms and everything. Yeah. I know that part. But this season is so low budget. Yeah. Like, all the dates feel really low budget to me that I did wonder... And because of the huge gap in time, like where it's daylight, yeah. they see the wedding, and then it's dark, you know, when they go yeah. back. I did wonder if that part of it was not originally the plan. What do you think? I mean, well, I don't want to I mean, be it was like, obviously dude. a real wedding, you know, and well, I think that... I think that, you know, it could be that when they were, they knew they're going to be, be in the area when they were scouting locations, the vineyard or whatever may have been like, listen, we have a wedding that day. And the producer may be like, perfect. Like, with someone may have gotten that idea based on their knowing there'd be a, a wedding there. Because they could have very easily just like shot on another day or found another place to do it, you know. So I right. think that, I, I don't, I don't know if they were like, or it could be that they just really wanted like them to crash a wedding as like a pitch idea and. And they and they found where a wedding and they just approached people, you know. They do things like that every season. Like in the next episode, they have the girls in wedding dresses, and that's a frequent shtick that they pull. Where they'll either like they'll bump into the old couple who's married, yeah, yeah, yeah. or they'll bump into a what oh, they'll see a wedding happening. Um, and then one time they had a, a photo shoot that was all of them dressing up. They were yeah. married. So I mean that part is, but this to like actually get up in somebody's grill of like their wedding and like oh, it was weird. Yeah. I think, again, uh, some people probably come into the show, like, I don't think Caitlin's, Caitlin may, I, I'm actually now at this point starting to think Caitlin might be the next Bachelorette. I could um, see that. She's, I, she's a little bit sassier, but they they have had forays into sassier. Well, Andy, I think, was a different type of sassy, but yeah. Andy was sassy. And they years ago had one named Jillian Harris, yeah. who was pretty funny. So I could see her maybe being. I could being, see her being the Bachelorette, or I could see... Like Brit or or Jade because Jade is so pretty, right? Uh, but, I don't. But think... Brit to me is like a bombshell. You know what I mean? Like she Brit is. is like really hot, and I could she see. Is. She's beautiful. Yeah, and I could, and she like has a brain and she has a personality. So I could, I could see her being a bachelorette for sure. The one thing that I think about that is. And it could be the producers could override it because they did with Juan Pablo because so many people demanded that Juan Pablo yeah. be the bachelor. So even though he got voted off many weeks before, but I just feel like Brit, Brit's not pliable enough for Chris. Like she's already like yeah. talking to him about things or observing things or whatever, not buying into it quite as much. Yeah. And so I feel like she's not going to be there at the very, very end. And usually who's the bachelorette or the bachelor is the person who's in like the top three or four. Mm -hmm. She might. But I feel like, you know, anyway, we'll, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, so that was Whitney's day. Whitney gets the rose. Yeah. Um, that happens. And then they come in and they do, um, <laughs> they do the pool party instead of the cocktail party day. Yeah. Um, I think we see Jade's boob. Right, there is John some Jade said, boobage. I'm sure that her boob was exposed because today when I watched it on the on demand, uh -huh. they put not a black bar like they have done with Jillian's butt, but they had put something that like blacked out that area. Uh, okay. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure it was her boob that was there. So that was exciting. Thrill <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, a minute. Jillian, her butt is blocked out every time we see her. Like every single this episode is when it started to come really glaringly off of this. Yeah. That every time. Um, there has to be some inside joke with the editors. Like, I don't... Clearly, there's nothing There's nothing inappropriate happening. No more so. Right. I mean, other. I mean, especially because the week before that, in week two, they put it over her butt when she was in jeans. <laughs> so it's just like, unless she's wearing, like, crotchless jeans. <laughs> just jeans with the ass cut out, just like... Right, like, it's like chaps yeah, or something. just assless jeans. Right. So the, Jillian's in the hot tub. She corners, not corners Chris, but Chris is in there with her. And this is when Ashley I, who oh. I realized upon putting the, you know, the, the scene together or whatever, that Ashley I hadn't gotten a date that week. But she has, she's obsessed with her own virginity. It's all she talks about. She's obsessed it's with just, herself in general. 
she has a major meltdown because J Jillian wouldn't get out of the hot tub. I remember like Megan, I think it's Megan McKenzie and Ashley I go over to the hot tub and Jillian's like, I'm still talking to him. And Ashley I falls apart. <laughs> you know, it was like, you see her man, crying. She's like, that's just not right. Like if somebody came and they told me they wanted to get in the hot tub, I would just give that person a turn. And I was like, what grade are we in here? <laughs> no, it's like, it's real. It's real. It's a lot. It's a lot. She, I mean, I think that we can all be in agreement that she is the worst just categorically happening right now. She has she, a walking, talking headache, and it's just like, please stop. Yeah, and please she also stop. did flashing forward, but so I don't, before I don't forget, she did the thing. This was the rose ceremony where I believe they clipped to her and she said, I did communicate to Chris that I really appreciate that he ca has called my name first in the top several ones, and that was the episode that he made her wait till very last. <laughs> Which is, like, cruel, either cruel or editing, but it, I yeah. was also, like, yeah, you know, great, yeah. do it. <laughs> the, the other awkward thing that happened at this particular pool party, you know, aside from the fact that it's just generally awkward to be at a pool party when there's, like, one guy and all these women. Like, I just yeah. don't think I could fully participate. But for whatever godforsaken reason, whether they got a cattle prod and, like, pushed her out there to do it, but this is the moment when Julia, who has had no other interactions with Chris that we know yeah. of, no one-on-one -on -one dates, no conversations, which normally would be a precursor to you telling someone really important things about yourself. This yeah. is when she tells the tra tragic story mm -hmm. that we already knew, that the ladies already knew, but tells Chris, who, again, doesn't, I don't mean like he's a bad, but he doesn't care about these ladies for the most part. Yeah. Like, she did not have the right, America doesn't have the right to know this about her, mm -hmm. but as, in, in terms of their relationship, he doesn't have the right to know something that deep about her, and it was really awkward, because she's in her swimsuit, and a yeah. weird headpiece, they were all wearing headpieces, did you yeah. notice that? Yeah. And tells him about all of that, and that was really awkward. It was awkward, I felt bad for her, and it's like... Again, it's the, but again, it's the concept of the show, like, like to your point, what you were talking about, you know, a few episodes ago, when you were like, why are these women, like, revealing all of these deep, dark secrets about themselves right. off the bat? But it's like, we don't see the hours drag on when these other women are on dates or whatever. That's a full day. Like, they were on that pig farm or whatever for all day. The rest of the time, these other women are just, like, staring at the walls. So at some point... All you have to do is talk to yourself, and that's how these how these reality shows work. It's like it gets you to the point where you're just so bored that you just yep. will talk about anything, you know. Right. And so, I still I, can't figure out why she approached him to tell him about that. Do you know what I mean? In a sad like, I, way, I, that, I, yeah. I just in, in a sad way. And I don't mean the to fault this to fault her as a person because I feel like I would have probably done the same thing in this situation. But at this point, it's also like differentiating yourself from the pack, and it's just like. You know, she was probably like, listen, like, yeah. I need to hold this person's attention. And not to say that she's exploiting the death of her, like, late husband by doing this necessarily, but I feel like if there was one aspect of your life, and to her knowledge, the possibly the only situation that she has to talk to this person, it's like, I feel like you want to make the most of it, and you want to sort of have the most connecting conversation that you can. And, right. like, by saying that, like, you are forging a connection with him because he's not going to be like, oh, fun story, like, see you later. You know, it's like you, he, he, it forces him to have some sort of interaction. And, again, I don't mean to suggest that she's exploiting it, but at the same time, it's like that is sort of the way that you would talk to someone if you were potentially only going to tell them this one thing once. Well, and it kept her there for another week. Yeah. And, I don't know, she, cause she, was on the, she was on the race date, and we didn't hear her. She's not somebody, that, other than that moment where they showed a, her talking to the, the other ladies, mm -hmm. she's not somebody who's had a lot of airtime, at yeah. least. And that, I was like, well, he's for sure not going to send you home that yeah. week after you say that. And that's yeah. true. That like, And it does mean that probably, in reference to these other ladies, per, potentially a super significant, a, a life altering um, deep experience that she's had that mm -hmm. does say something about her character that does say yeah. something about the person that she is 
um, which I think flashing forward in contrast, because she's the, as Chris Harrison so lovely said to us, she's the, she, the two widows, she's one of them, and this is the story that she told Chris, yeah. which made me realize that Kelsey, I, I realize, is like the only person at this point that we know of who has a tragic story to tell who as far as we know has not told any of the ladies and has not told chris and now so, like, i have more insight on our dear kelsey as a person and again i'm not i'm not saying any of these things to despair just like these women because they're on tv bearing it all and like i'm not so who am i to judge but well, we are now <laughs> somebody's bit. gonna do a show about critiquing us a little bit do. of judgment but yeah. um She's a little bit of an elitist, which we see a lot in episode four, that she sees herself as head and shoulders above the rest of these girls. And I could see her being like, oh, and she's smart, you know? It's true. So I could see her being like, oh, no, I'm not going to be the girl that cries on his shoulder week two. Like, if he hears about this, it's going to be, like, in the fantasy suite. You know what I mean? It's like she she's playing the game long and I don't fault her for that at all, but, you know, it's, she's, I, I'm not surprised. And, and remember when, when, uh, Julia tells her story to the, to the girls, I was like, mm-hmm. it's weird that Kelsey didn't say, oh, I've also, or even take her aside and be like, you know, I've also experienced this, blah, blah, blah. Cause that's what my instinct would have done. But I think her instinct wasn't that she didn't want to necessarily share it, but I think it was just like. You know, just being like, no, like, I'm not spilling my soul in week one in this house. Like, no way, you know? Right. So I think she's well, just approaching it from a different angle. I would, I think that's very insightful. I completely agree. And I also felt like in that moment, there was a little bit of, like, bitch stole my thunder. Yeah. Because I felt like she has a tragic story. But I think, so uh, unfortunately, it's like, It's really depressing. Right, but if you're comparing, like heart attack to suicide. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. So like, bad. you know what I mean? Like, I feel like the suicide story, they're both incredibly tragic. Yeah. But it's like, at least that was mother nature, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that is really soul crushing. That was really difficult. Yeah. I think that this quality that you're alluding to, I think that's very true, is why she has been so confident. Yeah. Absolutely. Because she has come across as very, in, in rose ceremonies, girl never looks worried. She doesn't interface with the other ladies. Anytime you see her talk about what happened, she does that crazy laugh thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, and I think that quality that she has where she's like, I'm in a different league yeah. than these other people, that's a, probably a defense mechanism. It may not be genuinely how she actually positions herself in the world and other situations. I don't know. But I think that's why she's been able to hold it together, be so confident. I think that's very true. Yeah. Also, where were the pool parties on The Bachelorette? Hello? Well, they did have, um, they did the stripper part. They did the stripper date. I guess. It just seems like do- this season, there's a lot of bikinis and, like, Chris off his shirt. Like, there's a lot of that going on. Well, but, like, that thing, that snapshot I just showed you of um, Carly's brother, Mm -hmm. that was, like, some sort of, like, runway show where they all had to wear swimsuits in front of people. I think the difference, really, is is not as much that they haven't been bikinis more this season. It's that they're staying at the house. Mm. It's the budget thing. They'd have them in bikinis no matter what. But every, if you notice, every date that they're doing is cheap. Like, I could pay for it. Cheap. Let me spot this. Let me spot you. Yeah. Let's see. Like, and, and I think that's the difference. Like, they'd be in bikinis no matter what. Just like, I mean, um, many of the dates had the guys either taking their clothes off, like, the, you know, yeah. the stripper thing, or, the, or they do model shows or some sort of an auction event where they have to do a talent show and everybody's, you know, showing. Yeah. And all the bachelors before have had their shirts off a lot. But I just think it's, they don't, they're not spending any money mm-hmm. uh, this season. They're really cutting budget. Yeah. You know, where they're like, can we do a date at Walmart? Uh, that's a little bit too cheap. Why don't we go Costco? You know? I mean, they're really... Yeah. So they do the rose ceremony. We see Ashley I like, she has the meltdown at the pool party, where I thought he was going to put his hand in her crotch. There's this one shot. 
I seriously, I thought he was going to go for the gold oh, because man. it showed she's crying. He's he's gone around. God bless him. He's gone around and made out with all the ladies. I think I mean, everyone he, at this point. Equal opportunity. Yeah, seriously. There are a few. Like, he did not make out with Trina, which I support. <laughs> I have not made out with Trina either. Who is Trina? I still don't know. Well, it doesn't matter because she left this episode. <laughs> um, and she didn't go on a date this episode. Um, the one thing she did this episode that was nice, it was the only thing I've, I ever saw her do that was nice, and whether it was genuine, I, I don't know, but it looked genuine, was when Whitney got the date card, Trina went like, I'm so happy for you, girl. And it looked like yeah. she meant it. Yeah. I don't think he's, I don't think he's made, he made out with Nikki. We never saw him. I don't think he's kissed Kelsey. No, he hasn't. He hasn't. I thought about that. No, not that we've yeah, seen. Yeah. Because again, she's not playing that. Like, I right. think that's more her. Her. This Did he kiss him. Jillian? Has hmm? he kissed Jillian? Did he kiss Jillian? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. But so he, he kissed. He's kissed Caitlyn. He kissed. Well, Ashley S kissed him in episode four. Carly kissed him. Yeah. Becca has not kissed him. Mackenzie was the first, as we know. Tracy. You know, Amber kissed him a couple times because yeah. Amber went for it. Yeah. But anyway, when he, after Ashley went, had her meltdown after Jillian wouldn't get out of the hot tub and Ashley was like sitting on the balcony and you've, we've seen her sobbing and she cries to him and anyway, he started kissing her yeah. and I really thought they showed his hand was on her leg and I really thought, <laughs> no, <laughs> I was like, I really thought we were getting ready to, and who knows, they may have cut, cut tape before that. <laughs> She's, she's, she's. One is that if you want to get into discussion about race and like relationships in America, we can do that because she's fucked. Like, take it from me. Also, <laughs> me neither. Um, also, this is kind of my problem I have with like television, specifically like network TV in America and making way for diversity. Mm -hmm. It's like, of course we want diversity within culture. There's an onus on, you know, creators of television, whatever, to create diversity. But so much of it just strikes me as insincere. That it's just like, do, do you really? I mean... Amber is a beautiful girl. She deserved to be on that show just as much as anyone else. But it's like, did the producers of that show really, like, want to showcase diversity? Does Chris want diversity? No, No. probably. No, and and that's... Yeah. That's why I think it's not insignificant. Because she initiated... Yeah. Like, what Carly did, too. Carly initiated kissing him. Yeah. But I was like, that's, I, in, in terms of that show, yeah, it's not insignificant, unfortunately. Well, I guess in ter- terms of perhaps what we see on TV in general. Yeah. And I feel no, like, exactly. no, they don't want it. They don't want it. And that's why they keep the numbers the way that they do. Exactly. That's why they keep the numbers the way that they do. They want to offer us a certain... Certain ideas about yeah. about sexuality and all of that, you know. Yeah, and it's about about be that. yeah about everything, and and it's 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 a bummer. It's like it's like you are just doing like the like you know Popular minimum thing. quota of what it would take. For not for someone not be like this is the whitest show. We're like, who are these white people? You know, they're like, we had Amber. She lasted three weeks. It's just like, why not put five black girls there? Why not put five white girls up there? Like, fuck. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's like, why is this? Why is this? Is this like proportion? Why is it just percentage? Right. Well, that especially be, when be and ever I think breached? it's I think it's because they want to reduce. They, in my opinion, and that's why I noticed. Like, I was thinking about the fact that she went home, and then I was like, wait. But at least they kissed a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And I think that they intentionally want to reduce the chance that that happens. I absolutely agree. And that's why we were, like... They reduce the chance that that happens. And I think, because it's not just about, like, it would be easy to say in this case, because, like, I will say Sean Lowe's season, as I said before, was more 
um, I don't remember, but I remember thinking like, oh, there's more diversity present, you know, in, in, a, in a few different ways. Like, um, and he apparently in real life prior to that, he, he said that he had dated women from a lot of different backgrounds or whatever. Um, and that would seem to be borne out. But it would be easy to say, oh, they're not, they're not doing it because Chris lives in Iowa and he's a farmer and they're doing this. For, you know, it would be easy to say that. But obviously they bring on plenty of other people that they know aren't going to make it. Yeah. Like, you can't tell me that these geniuses who put the soundtrack behind these people and who edit the show the way that they do actually thought that Ashley S. could yeah. hang. You know, yeah. you can't make me believe that Samantha. Yeah. What's a legit pig? You know, Megan, Megan, they know yeah. Megan. Yeah. You know, so it's like, why not? You know, and I think it's because they don't want it to. Ha they don't want to want it to happen. Yeah, and it's like again, and even no Asian girl, no South <laughs> Asian girl, right? Pacific Islander, nothing. It's just like it's it's like it's this completely, you know, um, uh, uh, archaic like, you know, sense of diversity to the point where if you're going to be that archaic, then don't even bother. Don't even bother with Amber. Right. Like, you know, it's just like, what, 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 are you, what is the pretense here that makes you think this is in, in any way a step towards diversity? It's ridiculous. And to, and to the point of what um, we were talking about last time with Andy, where we were like, you know, a great bachelor, in my opinion, would have been my boy Markel. But it's like when we were talking, will there ever be a black bachelor, a black bachelorette? Absolutely not. Like people would lose their fucking mind if some black guy, right, was out here making all these white people. No, people would. I mean, I would live, but people would be like losing their fucking minds. You know what I mean? Right. So it's just it would reveal. It would reveal so much about the things that we know that's there. Yeah. We know the, we know, I feel like I know, unfortunately, the ideas that are there and the reasons why they keep this from happening. But, but if you did have, a, particularly a black bachelor, like, I just feel like the... <laughs> like the world would come crumbling down. It would reveal, it would reveal so much of what people think and that, that, that they, they don't say and that like... Yeah pretend by bringing, you know, one or two people on a season to reflect diversity, you know, it would just, but anyway, um, yeah. that was episode, that was episode three. Yeah. And then there were 15. So that week, Trina, I'm glad to see her go. Trina, Amber, and Tracy. Tracy, who I still think is super cool, and I'm glad she got out because she was too cool for and it's always, there's always like one or two people a season, I feel like, that just aren't into it. Yeah. And they end up going home pretty, pretty early because they're not into it. Like Brett, the hairstylist on Andy's season, he was just like not into it. And I always yeah. kind of like, I like those people because well, I mean, they it's kind of like they're seeing it and they're not commenting on it except internally. We don't see them saying much of anything, but it's like you can tell they're just like, what is this shit show? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think it's fair also just that, that like on, when you look at someone on a screen, you may be like, oh, Andy or Chris, mm, but then you might see them in person and be like, actually, nah, like, you know, yeah. like, that happens. You exactly. Know? So like, exactly. That, that could be... It, or you see, you know, and that, that's what's interesting, like, I feel like the reason why most of these women are into him is because of that, like, he's the only man on the island kind of a thing. Yeah. That happens, I mean, like, you know, but, I... But if evaluated yeah. his personality in another environment where there were more men around. Yeah, exactly. That's he didn't what I'm offer you that That's much. Like you live in where yeah. you're thrown by going to Costco. What? Yeah, you don't exactly. want to talk about aliens. Yeah. Get yeah. Here. 